Hello, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, this might be a little uh, strange for you to listening to or even watching it. But um, if you're familiar with my channel, you know my channel is all about martial arts and music. I'm a producer and a martial artist. I'm teaching and I'm learning and I'm traveling. So on November 1st, I was meant to fly to the Philippines. I was invited to the um, 85th anniversary of Gong Han Athletic Club uh, in Manila. The Gong Han Athletic Club is like the second oldest martial art club in the Philippines, or in this case in Manila, Chinatown. So um, I'm very good friends with the Gong Han Athletic Club, especially with Sifu Henry Lo, who is like the third generation of that club. Uh, actually, his grandfather um, founded the club back in 19, let me think, 37. So, so actually the 85th anniversary, anniversary would have been uh, uh, in yeah, 2022, last year, but for uh, different reasons they had to postpone the anniversary one year later so actually this year would be the 86th anniversary but the celebration for it was this year so I was invited to this as a guest of honor and well I got the ticket early I think in May and um, prepared prepared for the trip and um, so since I have a YouTube channel with and, and I'm doing content I was planning ahead of time with a lot of stuff I wanted to do so I was gonna interview uh, Monsieur del Rosario for example which whom I'm friend with since 2008 well back in the days like 2008 I was living in the Philippines still in Manila Chinatown and he had a show called fit and fast and he actually came to the school where I was teaching at and interviewed me. So this this uh, interview, well, it's more like a little documentary actually, well, it's because it's nearly 30 minutes long and uh, it ran on some Filipino uh, channel. I forgot which one now, but I think you only could get it if you had cable. Anyway, um, so we've been friends since that time. So that's... Uh, 15 years so now I wanted to interview him for my channel you know so that was one part of the plan when I uh, go to the Philippines uh, what I wanted to do there but obviously I was gonna uh, make videos about the whole event which would uh, took three days but by now it's already done so the anniversary was on November 5 <clears throat> and they planned for three days of uh, activities like November 4, 5 and 6. So on the, on the 5th was the, uh, the the actual anniversary, but on the 4th there were some meetings on, on, on the 5th and then on the 6th I think they was gonna go to some waterfalls with the whole group of people that visited for the anniversary because Gong Han Athletic Club has schools in Canada, America and some other countries, I think Australia and uh, a lot of befriended schools from all over the world so all together they expected uh, visitors from 14 countries anyway I was uh, one of them and uh, I was on the airport on uh, November 1st my flight was supposed to go like 6 p.m. in the evening in German time so I was at the airport uh, when I arrived at the airport it was still two hours time till um, departure so there was a long, long, long line already for the check-in. So the, 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 the line was that long, they had to make it a U shape, in a U shape, in a long U shape. So uh, I was at the end of that and nothing happened. So I was there waiting and waiting and then there was like an announcement that uh, the check-in will uh, be a bit delayed for some technical reasons. So all right, okay, I'm waiting. But uh, after an hour later, still nothing happened, and so I'm starting to get a little nervous. Um, so 
I think at that time they made another announcement that all the all the all the passengers that would um, had a stopover in Istanbul but would transfer to another flight uh, need to go to the uh, Turkish airline um, service desk so I was flying with Turkish Airlines by the way so I went to the Turkish Airlines service desk along with um, I don't know about a hundred other passengers so we all went there and uh, I was pretty close to it because I was last in line and the service desk was literally behind me so I just need to, needed to turn around and uh, walk up the uh, service desk so I went there and then they told us one person actually told us just by shouting he didn't even have like a microphone or whatever he just told us all the passengers that were that need to transfer in uh, Istanbul can go home now that's all he said so obviously a lot of people were not satisfied with that with that statement so um, they kept asking oh, so hello excuse me what, 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 what does it mean some some of the passengers actually not even from Hanover that's where I flew from or was gonna fly from uh, some of them uh, were came from quite far you know from other cities in Germany so um, he told us yeah that they can't do nothing they all the all the computers are down, the, the, the whole IT system is down and they can't do nothing right now. So we should go home and contact Turkish Airlines through either the web page or the hotline. So, uh, well, and that was November 1st. So if I, had, if I was able to get on this plane, I would have arrived next day on the, on the, on the 2nd of November, right? in the evening Filipino time so I was thinking okay well if I can fly tomorrow then I'm okay you know I just lose a day but I still can do all the things I was gonna do you know uh, another thing I wanted to do I, I was gonna meet Sifu Williams soon of Ling Nam uh, Ling Nam is a, a, a huge a huge uh, martial arts uh, Federation there as well in the Philippines and Manila uh, and they do a lot of lion dance but they also have different styles and last time I was in the Philippines it's not too long ago in May I was uh, learning a set from Sifu William Soon for a white crane style and I was, go wanna, I was gonna go into depth with that you know so a lot of plans a lot of things a lot of content that I couldn't do right now so anyway I went home uh, first thing I was do was gonna do was uh, call the hotline. I called the hotline, and well, they said to call. They just told me to call back later. I mean, I can understand that. By then, I knew that about more about hundred flights were cancelled because of that technical issue they have. They had sorry, uh, the ITs. Uh, so the whole system went down. Not only in Hanover, but everything that had to go through. Istanbul, I think, had problems. So more than 100 flights were cancelled. Uh, so obviously a lot of people would have called the hotline or, you know, tried to resolve their problem. So they kept telling me, but you know, I was a bit in a hurry because I needed to get a flight the next day. If I didn't, if I couldn't get a flight the next day, then I don't need to fly at all, you know, because uh, it would be too late. It would be because you know, my return was on the 7th of November and I couldn't, I couldn't uh, stay longer, I couldn't extend my trip because just I had to be back for my work, you know, so it was all planned out, you know. So yeah, so um, I tried to call them, I mean I called them actually and they always kept telling me, call later, call later, call later. At some point I, I, I gave up, I said, yeah, well, if I can't, if you can't help me now, then I just want my refund, you know. So now I'm in, the, today is uh, October 6th or 7th. Uh, today is October 7th. Today I would actually, I, I would fly back already from the Philippines. So uh, I'm here in Germany, I, obviously I didn't fly. And uh, now I'm just hoping to get my refund back, you know. So this is still in process. 
and uh, yeah but so I just wanted to let you know um, there was a, a lot of plans and also another thing is I was going to the Philippines to uh, to sort out some things for the future you know we um, we have some plans for the future next year actually uh, me and my wife and uh, there were some meetings set up beforehand and those are obviously couldn't happen so yeah I'm still here like I said and uh, next time I'm gonna fly next year with me and my wife and uh, about that I will tell you in the near future but yeah um, so I got some students in the Philippines in Manila and they attended that anniversary and represented me and um, they, they, they got some footage from that event and I'm waiting for the footage and we'll put it together for a little clip so you can see what happened uh, so yeah I was uh, pretty much disappointed and sad because you know I was looking forward a lot to to this event, especially the uh, Gong Han anniversary, since I'm very good friends with a lot of members of that uh, uh, of Gong Han, and um, I was uh, really looking forward to meet all the other guests from abroad. And yeah, I was asked by Sifu Henley to perform there at that event as well. You know, I um, if you check out my channel and uh, one of my more recent videos is a, a little performance I did here in Germany outside uh, on the day of the anniversary actually. I, I did that form outside here, it's called Lo Gakun and Lo Gakun, uh, Lo is the name, Henry Lo is the, the teacher, the third generation teacher of Gang Han and um, he taught me two of their Mjaokun sets. Mjaokun is the Cantonese name for five ancestors, so in their own dialect they call it Rocho Kun. Or in, in, in Mandarin I think it's Wu Tzu Chuan. And uh, five ancestors first in English. So I learned two of those sets, those short sets. They are kind of a mix of external and internal. And I feel like uh, since it's a Fujian martial arts, uh, with a lot of influence, well, one fifth of the five ancestor is White Crane, Fujian White Crane, and uh, and, and I think Hong Kun has some has some influence from that style as well, especially in our Tetsin Kun, the the Iron Thread Fist, and that's why I uh, always wanted to learn some of their sets just for myself to see, uh, you know, to to feel the connection. So I learned two sets, and but I combined them and added some Hunga flavor and uh, called it Lo Gakun. Uh, it's not like I didn't try to improve the style, you know, the, the Five Ancestors style, or make it better. So it's not better. It's just like a highlight. It's just like a highlight of their, of some of their sets that I use for my style, Hong Gakun, uh, just to, you know, for because in my opinion there's this connection because Tetsin Kun definitely comes from Fujian province and uh, has the, the white crane influence, the, the you know, the Fujian white crane. And um, so that's the reason why I made that set. Well, I didn't make that set, but I used those two sets and make it my own, uh, my, uh, a special version, a highlight version for my, our style, for our curriculum, you know, so. So yeah, and uh, yeah, I was supposed. And Sifu Henry actually asked me to perform that set at this anniversary. So uh, so even when I also back in 2008 when I actually combined combined those two sets, I took the blessing from Sifu Henry. So before I uh, went like public with it, I made sure that I got the blessing. From someone from that style, from someone with a high position, like Sifu Henry, who is like a third generation master of the, his own family, because his grandfather came to the Philippines in the 1930s and uh, opened a school in, in Manila, Chinatown. 
So yeah, that's it. Uh, a lot of talking, but um, I hope you understand. And uh, this was, this could have been so nice with so much content, nice content. But I will, uh, I will get that back. I'm, I'm, I'm going to interview uh, Monsieur de Rosario. I'm going to train at Lingnam to get more details of that set that I learned there and you will see and hear more from me. All right, thank you for watching. Please, uh, if you like the video, like it, subscribe my channel and uh, leave a comment. All right, salute.